Thanks for joining us today at Lighthouse Outreach Ministries. We're lighting the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, listen today as Pastor Green shares some biblical truths that will shine upon the true light, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to minister to you tonight from the word uh, that the Lord gave me. And we're going to entitle tonight's word, Full of Faith. Tonight's title is Full of Faith. And uh, this weekend I was meditating in the New Testament where it says that men like Jesus and men like Stephen and men like Paul, different men of the Bible, were said to be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. And I told the Lord that I wanted to be full of faith and I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want to actually be full. So I asked the Lord, how was somebody supposed to be full of faith? How was we supposed to know if we were full of faith? And uh, how to become full if we wasn't full? How do we know if we're full of faith? How can we become full of faith? How do I know I'm not just half full of faith? So I told the Lord that's what sort of sent me on this journey to share with you tonight from this word. If you would, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 6. And we're going to be going in our Bibles a few different places tonight. I'll just call them out real quickly, and we'll turn there real quick and go from one scripture to the other because there's some scriptural foundation I just want to lay for us in the Word before we get to talking about being full of faith tonight. But this is to help you to become full of faith because God wants you to be full of faith. In Acts chapter 6, in verse 5, It says, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. So what was he full of? He was full of faith, number one, and he was full of the Holy Ghost. Not half full, he was slam full. He was slap full. The way we'd say it in the South, he was slap full. If you go out to dinner, you eat, you come out of dinner from the South, you say, I'm slap full. I mean, he was completely full of the Spirit. And it says not only him, but Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. So it lists others, not just Stephen, but look how many and what it says about them. That when they were choosing what was happening here, the um, disciples uh, were to look out among themselves for seven men that were honest Verse 3 says, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Notice they were full of wisdom too. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, full of faith that they could appoint over the business. And that was of the daily ministration for the widows. So they even made sure they had to have certain men that was full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, full of wisdom that could handle the business, the Lord's business. God wants some people. Amen. To do his business that are full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. You're going to do business for God. Amen. You're going to do God's business. You've got to be full of faith. Amen. You're going to do God's business. You've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. So we got to find out how we can be full and how many, how many want to be even fuller. I want to be fuller. I want to be full and overflowing with the Holy Ghost. Now, in verse 8, notice what it says again. And Stephen, full of faith. And power. He was not only full of faith and wisdom, but power and the Holy Ghost. We see in different ways it says that he, what he was full of. And then in Acts 11.24. It says here in Acts 24, For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. And so he's talking about the persecution that rose against Stephen in verse 19. And uh, uh, he goes on down to say that, that he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. And much people was added, added to the Lord. And so, again, I'm just pointing out different scriptures that talk about being full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. So it must be important because he kept reading it. It's very important because he kept repeating it over and over. Now I looked up in the concordance what the word literally full means. And in the Greek word, it's 4134. 
and of faith is the Greek word G4102, and it actually means this. The Greek word in the Strong's Concordance for fool here is the Greek word pleres, P-L-E-R-E-S, and it means full, in other words, filled up as opposed to being empty, and it says A, of hollow vessels, B, of a surface covered in every part, C, of the soul thoroughly permeated with. It also means full, <clears throat> in other words, complete, lacking nothing, perfect. That is the full definition of the word full of faith here. It means filled up as opposed to being empty. It means a vessel that is not hollow, that is not empty, a vessel that is filled. It is complete, lacking nothing, perfect. So in order to be complete, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. He wants you don't, not only to just have a portion or a measure. You know, there's given unto every man a measure of faith. Every man has a measure of faith. But God doesn't want you to have a measure. He wants to have it filled and full. You know, when he, when I was looking up different verses about uh, being full, and there was some verses here that stood out in Matthew 14, 20. It said, they did eat and were all filled. When he took up 12 baskets, there were 12 baskets full. See, God likes full. He wants you to be full. He says be filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled here means full. It means completely full. Look at Luke 4.1. Luke 4, 1, what does it say about Jesus? It says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, he returned from Jordan, and then he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So Jesus, we know, was full of the Holy Ghost. How many of you want to be more like Jesus? Well, Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. So to be more like Jesus... We need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Luke 5, 12 talks about being a man being full of leprosy. We don't want that. <laughs> John 1, 14 talks about being full of grace and truth. I'd like that, full of grace, full of truth. Um, in Acts 7, 55, it talks about being full of the Holy Ghost. Acts 9.36 speaks of a woman full of good works and alm deeds. That's good. Um, this one's not good. And Acts 13 speaks of a man who was full of all subtlety and all mischief. That was not good. <laughs> and in Acts 19.28, it speaks of being full of wrath. So there's different things we can be full of. How many of you ever say, have you ever heard someone say, well, oh, he's full of it. <laughs> now, that's generally not spoken of in a nice way. <laughs> but tonight, I want to ask you, what are you full of? What are you full of? I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. I want to be full of faith. To be full of faith is to be faithful. Did the Lord not say be faithful? He said, pray that you may be found faithful. When I come, will I find faith? He wants us to be so full of faith that there's no room for doubt. There's no room for unbelief because we're just full of faith. No room in me for doubt. No room in me for unbelief. Get the doubt out. Let the unbelief go. 
and fill me with faith. You know, there's nothing wrong with just asking God to fill me with faith. Thomas, we remember he prayed. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So he had a portion of faith, and then he had a portion of unbelief in him that he knew was there, and he cried out to the Lord to help him. If he can do it and he was a disciple, then we can do it. Amen? I think it's perfectly acceptable to say this. Lord, I want to be full of faith. Make me full. Perfectly acceptable to take the word of God, see what should be, and then pray for what you desire. Jesus said, if, you're, if my words abide in you, there's his word. It's good to be full of faith. You can ask me whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. See, now we know what his word says is good and right and acceptable with God. It's God's perfect will for us to be full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom. So now we can ask him on the authority of your word, I ask you, fill me with faith. Fill me with Holy Ghost. Fill me with wisdom. Fill me with power. You can seek the Lord now in accordance with his word. Sometimes when we pray, we seek God for shallow things. Help me to have a good day today, Lord. (laughs) Oh, praise the Lord. I got up for another day. Thank you, Jesus. We don't ask him for big things. He wants to do bigger things. He can do bigger things through people that he does bigger things for. He can do greater works through you. He said, these works that I do and greater works shall you do. But we've got to be like these men were. Stephen and these other men with the hard names. (laughs) The weird names. What's happened to all the Stevens? I like that I can pronounce Stephen. But what I notice about them, what's mentioned about them, Is that what they were full of faith? And they were full of the Holy Ghost. And they were good men. Come on, good men. Honest men. The word made note that they were honest and of a good report. They had a good reputation for being honest and upright. In other words, if they told you something, it was the truth. They, it was honest. They were upright. They were holy. They were just. But also they were full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So if our desire is to be more like Christ, to be more Christ-like, and to please the Lord, then we need to have faith. Now I want you to turn to Hebrews 11. And the reason I'm getting you to turn there in the scriptures with me tonight, sometimes it's good to hear it, but also your eyes and your ears are channels to your heart. Your eyes are channels. You got two eyes. They're channels that go right into the heart when you see the word, and your ears are channels when you hear the word. It goes right into your ears. So we're going to use our eyes and our ears. Hebrews 11. Now look at verse um, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So first of all, we need to know this. The reason the Lord was pleased with Stephen and these others, and they were chose, he was pleased because they were full of faith. Because without faith, it's impossible for us to please God. You've got to understand this. Without faith, it's impossible for us to please God. So if, do you want to please God? Well, your faith and belief and trust and reliance on him pleases him. So all that is of faith in you, Every time you put your faith in him, it pleases him. When you say, Lord, I trust you, 
it pleases him. When you, when you fully believe that he is God, and you believe that he will reward you if you diligently seek him. How many of you tonight believe that God is God? That he's the God of heavens beyond our galaxy. And he is holy. The universe declares your majesty. He is holy. He is a God of wonders. He is the God of the, the heavens and the earth and the waters and the skies. He's, he's the God of all. But it says who comes to him must believe that he is God. And must believe that if you diligently seek him, amen, he'll reward you. Now, why would I diligently seek after something if there was going to be no reward there? It would not inspire me to seek him. What inspires me to seek God is, first of all, to know that he is God. I know there is a God. And I know that he is the one and only true and living God. So I do know that. That's faith. That's faith right there. That place pleases him. And then, secondly, I know that he will reward me. I know he'll, he'll reward me. He'll reward me if I seek him. In Matthew 6, he talks about rewarding you openly for the things you do in secret. If you pray in secret, he said, go into your closet and shut the door behind you and pray to me in secret and I'll reward you openly. He said, when you fast, fast unto me. Don't fast unto men and I will reward you openly. Sometimes we... We're not seeing God's manifest presence, his power, his anointing upon our lives, possibly because we're not seeking him like we need to be. How many of you could use to stand to seek God a little more? I could stand to use to seek God a little more, to spend a little more time seeking God, just to know him, seeking his face. When you seek God's face, you seek his favor. When you seek God's face, you seek the breath of his mouth, his spirit. When you seek God's face, you seek the word at his mouth. That's what happens when you seek his face. You seek to know him. Now, when you look away from his face and you look at his hands, you seek to receive something from him. Lord, would you give me this? Would you give me my daily bread? Would you give me this? Would you give me that? But he's already said, he will reward you if you'll diligently seek him and seek his face. Seek to know him. The reward will come with it. Some people don't seek to know him. They could care less about knowing him. All they do is want him to do for them. Bless me. Provide for me. Make sure I have an enjoyable life. Give to me all the things I want. Protect me. Do everything for me that your word promises. But I really don't care that much about coming to know you a whole lot better or to know you more intimately. But we should have a desire within us. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your heart. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know how you feel. Because, friends, he's real. When I want to get to know you, that I want to spend time with you. I want to talk to you. I want to listen to you. People that want to know the Lord don't want to just talk all the time. People that want to know the Lord want to listen. In fact, they know that listening is what they need more than talking. 
When I come to the Lord, I know he don't need to hear me more than I need to hear him. In fact, I'll tell him that sometimes. I'll say, Lord, I don't, you don't even need to hear me. But I sure need to hear you. I need to hear from you. I pray, Lord, that you would speak. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain? Word of God, speak. Speak to me. Let me hear your voice. Let me know what is in your heart. Let me know you. Reveal yourself to me. Manifest your presence. It's drawing near. When we seek the Lord, we have to know this. I want you to know this today. If you don't know this, you will never seek God. If you will seek God, you will find him if you'll seek him this way. With all of your heart. God is not going to reveal himself to any person who's not after him with their whole heart. You'll half know him. You'll know him in some ways, but not other ways. He desires intimacy with you. Intimacy means behind closed doors. Come on. He wants to have some quiet fellowship time with you and him. You talk to him, he talks to you. You laugh with him, he laughs with you. You say something, he says something. He literally desires to have the same fellowship with you that he had with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus restored that fellowship with God the Father and us when he died on the cross. The veil was torn in two, and now we can come into the Holy of Holies Church. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. People say y'all are a religious institution. What's your religion? It's not a religion at all. It's a relationship. Do you have a relationship with the God of heaven and earth? Do you have an intimacy with God? Do you desire an intimacy? Do you desire a closer relationship? If you do, you can have it. Tell me how. How can we be full of faith? First of all, we know that it pleases God. So, okay, I want to please God. So I need to be full of faith. And that's especially what we're talking to, about tonight is being Full of faith. Faith is the Greek word, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this right. It's spelled P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I or it's pronounced pistis. And it means this. Faith is conviction of the truth in relation to God, the conviction that God exists and is the creator and the ruler of all things, the provider and the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. How many of you have faith in God? That you believe that he exists, that he is the creator, he is the ruler of all things, he's the provider and the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. So when we say, do you believe in God, you could ask a thousand people, do you believe in God, and every one of them could say yes, and it's, we're not talking about the same God. Some people, are, your God is not the same God other people are talking about. Different religions have different gods. Some worship other gods. Some's God is Buddha, Muhammad. There's different religions have different gods, but our God is the one true and living God, the one I just defined here. There is one true and living God that exists and is the creator and the ruler of all. He is the provider and the bestower of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. So the scriptures confirm that our faith must be 
to believe that God is. When it says to, uh, that your faith has to be solid in this fact, our faith has to be solid in the fact that we must believe that God is God, and it's this God. The faith must be this type of faith, uh, pistis faith, the Greek says. We must believe this about God. Now, in relation to Jesus Christ, we, one must believe and possess a strong and welcomed conviction and belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we may obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. That's what the faith here means. We must believe that God is who he says he is. So several well, people say, but I have faith. But it's not this faith. It's not the faith and the God of the Bible. A lot of people say, but I have faith. But it's not the faith of the Bible or the God of the Bible. Some people say, I believe in God, but there is a God of the Bible, and there is a faith that we must have in the God of the Bible in order for us to please God. And this is it that I'm describing. I pulled it from the Strong's Concordance. This is what one's faith must be based in in order to please God. It must be based on this truth. So to be said that we have faith, one must believe with the predominant idea of trust being in God and Christ, and this belief springs from faith in the same. So we know we can be full of faith, but now how do we get full of faith like Stephen was and these others were? Well, we have to grow in knowledge. We have to grow in truth. We have to grow in grace. And we do that through prayer, through fellowship, through studying the word, through hearing the word. See, your faith is being ministered to. You're being ministered to now. When you're hearing the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, when you're hearing the word of God being spoken to you, in truth, the way it was written and meant to be ministered, your faith will grow. Now, if you're listening to something that's not right, if you're listening to some word somebody speaking and it's some watered-down message, it's not going to cause your faith to grow. It's got to be faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, what you're hearing is exactly the truth as it was written. So that's why we have to go deeper into studying, even in the, the concordance, to find out, well, it's not just any faith. It's faith has to be as it is written, that God exists. He's the ruler, etc., etc., and Christ, that salvation is obtained through him. So then after we've heard the word, we all have a choice. You hear the word? You read the word? We sit and we read this word. We read it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Do you believe that? I believe it is absolutely impossible for me to please God if I do not have faith. And the faith of the Bible is what I just shared with you. The faith about God and Jesus. Without that, I can never please God. Now, I have a choice now. I can choose to believe it. I can choose to trust in it. I can choose to obey it. I can let my dependence be upon the Lord, trust in him, trust in his goodness, trust in his promises. But the main thing about your faith growing and you being full of faith is hearing the word and believing the word. Hearing it, hearing it, seeing it, reading it, however you get in the word, and then choosing to believe it over everything else. That's how you become full of faith. Do you see how vitally important the word of God is to your faith? Do you know how important, I think unless we can see the importance of the word, we have no reason to want to go and open it up. 
I do this for me that I may grow in grace and knowledge and truth that I may be full of faith and please God. I believe it's not very pleasing to God for us to never open his word. Especially when faith comes by it. My God, and faith pleases him. And without it, it's impossible to please him. I'm going to tell you, I've been in desperate situations before in my life. Emotionally, financially, uh, physically. And I have absolutely went to the word of God, stayed there an hour, hour and a half, and come out healed and made every whit whole. Nothing changed except I went into the word and I got the word in me and it changed me. This is the living word of God, friends. This word has the power to change. The power to change. The power to heal. The power to deliver. The power to save. How did you get saved anyway? Through the word? Through, through the word. You had to hear the word before you could even have faith to you can't have faith till you've heard the word. That's why he sends preachers to preach. He said he sent a preacher to preach. So the preacher can preach the word so the people can have faith in the word. He goes, how can they believe except they hear? How can they hear except somebody preach? How can they preach except they're sent? Hallelujah. That's why God anoints and sends. And that's why we should have our churches full. And the preachers need to be preaching the word. Because faith comes by hearing the word. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. But once the word is preached. It is the person listening's choice. And some will mix the word with faith. And some won't. We could sit and preach right now. A minister could preach to 100 people. 50 could hear that word and have faith, a fuller faith in God by choosing to believe the message or the promise or whatever the minister was sharing. Walk away totally full of faith. Peaceful. Reassured, confident. Same 50 on the other side could hear the word and walk away and it not have any effect. That's when you make the word of God of none effect. People do that all the time. They hear the word and then they make the word of God of none effect. Why? Because they have not faith. They will not put, let their faith rest in God's finished word word they won't let their faith rest and believe the word a lot of people you know it says it's my will you know people say all the time uh, one man had a withered hand he came to jesus and he said jesus I, I would like to be healed and he said my hand is withered he said is it your will for me to be healed and jesus said i will Stretch forth your hand. So Jesus gave him the word. He told him what his will was. Was it his will for him to be healed? Yes. So he gave him the word. And then he told him to do something which required his obedience and faith. He said, now, stretch forth your hand. And the man tried to do it because he believed he could. And as he did it, it said, as he stretched forth his hand. He was made whole. If he wouldn't have believed, he'd have said, I can't do it, so I'm not even going to try. So when we're hearing the word, just say, for example, you have lost and wayward children. But you, you come across a scripture that God promises you your whole household. It says your children are going to be like the willow trees on the riverbanks. And they're going to spring up and da, da 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 And you read it and you say, Whoo, God has promised me my children. 
but we can walk away believing and holding on to those promises. That's being filled. I have faith in God and his ability to save my children, and I have faith in God's ability and his promise that he would do it. Now, you may have to hold on to that for 47 years. Abraham and Sarah did. They held on to the promise of God, and they laid hold on the promise. They even tried something different in the middle and messed all up. <laughs> they got tired of waiting and decided to get the flesh in it. And he told Sarah to, Sarah told Abraham to go and lay with the concubine. And they produced an Ishmael instead of an Isaac. Later they got the Isaac. But that's where the flesh tries to get in and does things for God. <laughs> Sometimes God don't need our help. He just needs our faith. And he needs us to be patient. Sometimes it takes a lot of patience. Come on. If you're believing God for anything in your life based on a promise of God, there may be much time of, of patient waiting. But don't ever give up. Never give up on anything God's promised you. That's his word. He's a God of his word. He cannot lie. God's not going to lie. He's not going to lie. Amen? Um, I want to talk to you just a minute about the major hindrances of your faith. So I've told you basically how to have faith. How can we be full of faith? So you should know the answer to that now. How can we be full of faith? Uh, we can be being filled with faith. We can just constantly be growing in faith. You know what? I can look at us here in this room, and I can tell you we've come from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. And there has been times back here that I believe such and such a thing until God revealed greater truths to me, and then my faith grew uh, to believe something a little bit different than what I had originally thought. So, see, the, we're growing in grace. We're growing in faith. Amen? And so God wants us to be full. Now, what are some of the hindrances? I want you to turn to 1 Timothy 6. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on just a minute. Let's turn to Psalms 10, 4. We don't need anything to hinder our faith, do we? If we want to be full of it, we don't want any kind of hindrances. I don't want me to be hindering God's work in me to produce a great faith in me. You know, we said earlier that we know that faith pleases God. And we have to believe that God is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. Now, the only kind of people that will not seek God, it tells us here, are the wicked. It says in Psalms 10, verse 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far, far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. So pride is your number one enemy of faith. Pride says, I don't need to trust in God. I don't need to have my confidence in God. I don't need to seek God. Do you know a proud man will not take the time to seek God? Why? Because he doesn't even think he needs to seek God. He feels he's got it all going on. I, what do you mean I need to pray, Pastor? What do you mean I need to study the Word of God, Pastor? What do you mean I need to seek the face of God, Pastor? What do you mean? Pride. God is not in the thoughts of those that are full of pride because they're full of self. You can't be full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost, and full of self, and full of pride. The biggest enemy 
of being full of faith and full of God, full of the Holy Ghost. Because God, the Holy Ghost is God, right? So to be full of God, pride is my biggest enemy. And it's my pride. The pride of life. The pride that says, I don't need God. I don't need to seek God. I don't even need to know God more. A proud man will not seek God. Woo! I, I'm thinking about some of even church people. I'm not thinking about the world now because the world don't seek God. A sinner don't seek God. I'm not thinking about church folks. <laughs> I'm thinking about church folks that don't spend time seeking God. Are we half full of pride and half full of faith? Are we a quarter filled with faith? Yeah, we got a quarter bit of faith in us. Faith unto salvation, that's about as far as it goes. We have to war against pride. Our own. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me when I just said that. He came all over me. I have to war against the spirit of pride. It's a spirit. The spirit of pride, which is a demonic spirit, is the voice that speaks to me and encourage, or encourages me not to seek God. You know, Sister Charlotte, you said tonight that may the Lord rebuke us for our laziness if we don't seek God, if we don't take time to study the Word, if we don't take time to pray. May the Lord rebuke us. She was just honest enough to say, and an open heart like that, God will fix. It's the proud ones that won't even attempt to say nothing like that. Who are we fooling? Who are we fooling? Who do we think we're fooling? It's manifest how we live our lives. Whether we're pursuing God or not. If you don't pursue God, it will manifest. Because pride will take you over. I've seen many people turn away from God because of their pride, their stinking pride. Stinking pride, y'all. When it don't have to be that way. But now, the voices that we hear. When we hear the word of God, and it says, seek God and live. What part of that didn't we get? Seek him and live. Don't seek him and die is what I hear. <laughs> I hear seek him and live. But I also hear, don't seek him and die, because there's two sides to every coin. So there's alternatives if I don't seek God. But if I believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, then I seek him by faith. I have faith in him, so I seek him. And I believe he's going to reward me, amen? So pride is the number one enemy against being full of faith. Don't let the voice of pride, don't let that voice come up inside of you that says, you don't need to take time to seek God. Your name is already in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's good enough. Just stay here. You don't really need any more of God. You're full enough of God. You've got a good enough measure to get you in. Don't pursue God. That's what that lying devil will say to you. Because he does not want you full of faith. Because he knows by faith you'll move mountains. He knows that a person that's full of faith will ask what they will and it shall be done unto them. He knows that by faith we can lay hold onto all kind of stuff. That Hebrews 11, it says, By faith women receive their dead husbands back to life. Your husband might be spiritually dead, but by your faith he might be brought to life. So the devil don't want you to be full of faith. He wants to talk you into compromising and just settle for the little measure that got you saved. But God wants to fill you with faith for others. 
Hallelujah. God wants to fill you with faith for other people's soul salvations. Not just your own. How selfish and how prideful is that for us to just get full of faith for ourselves? I got me in. I ain't caring about nobody else. I say things like that because I want us to really get what I feel his heart saying to me. You know, I say, Lord, show me what you're saying, what you're saying. And he says, my people, my people just, they're content with just having just enough to get themselves into heaven. When, when look at even more I could do in your ministry, if you'd be full of faith, like Stephen. Stephen was full of faith. I believe Stephen pursued God to be full. I believe he had to seek God. These men had to seek God to get full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost and full of power and full of wisdom. It didn't just come without any seeking. They didn't just go out, go to work every day and come home and eat dinner and go to bed. That was not their daily regimen and leave God out. Because it doesn't just happen. We must seek him. And when you seek him, you've got to seek him by faith, not with aggravation either. That's important to note. Sometimes you may seek God and get frustrated. But if you seek him by faith, with faith, you won't be frustrated. Faith is when you seek him, you believe he's going to reward you. See, if I go to God and say, okay, I make up my mind that tonight I'm just going to spend an hour or two seeking God. And I go to my bedroom and, you know, go to the closet, go on the front porch, wherever I want to go and seek God. I find me a place. It's important when you're ready to seek God, you find a place. A place of intimacy. Of, of distractions away from you. The cell phone off. The TV off. Other people knows you're having a private time. Leave me alone unless something emergency happens. Because if you don't prepare yourself, I promise you the devil will send every assignment against you to keep you from seeking God. You may have to even do it during the middle of the night. You may have to get up at 2 in the morning and seek God to 2 or 3 or 4 in the morning. I've done it many, many, many times. It's sweet. It's the best sleep you've ever lost. I'm telling you, it is. I told the Lord I'll stay up all night long anytime if you'll just manifest your presence to me like I had tonight. I'll gladly lose a night's sleep for this presence. When you pursue him, he will show up. You make the plans. Just like if you were just going to pursue someone that you, was, you love, you was going to have a date. Well, you don't just go out on a date and don't make no plans. You pick a nice restaurant. You take a shower and get your clothes on. You, you get to smelling good. You, you get on your best behavior. You get prepared. You get excited about your date. And you got things planned. See, with God, he wants to court you. He wants to actually have that kind of intimacy with you. Most of the church don't get this. So they worship a God from a distance. They know him from a long way off. Hey, God. <laughs> hey, Sharon. How you doing down there, God? <laughs> but I'm talking about when he holds you in his arms. And you can even sit quietly in his presence for an hour at the time. And be perfectly content without saying a single word. Don't want anything to interrupt it. Sweet fellowship. This is what he wants. He wants intimate fellowship with you. Now, I want it back. 
I want it. But you got to want it. Pride of a man will never seek God. How you know if a man is full of pride is he will never seek God. And that will hinder your ever being full of faith and ever pleasing God and ever being rewarded of God. Did I close it out where you can see it there? Lord, let not my pride be in me. Let not pride be in me that I will not seek your face. Rid me of pride. All that is of this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And pride of life is described as a man seeing himself as self-sufficient and with no need of God. That is the pride of life. If you don't see a need for God and for more of God, you will never seek him. Unless you can show me why I need this, I have no reason to pursue. Uh-uh. To, to most people, it's a waste of time. Pursuing God for us would be to a lot of people a waste of time. What you doing wasting your time? What you doing just sitting in there reading the word? What you doing just sitting down there praying again? To a proud man, time spent pursuing God is a pure waste of time. But to those who love the Lord, it's essential. We desire more. John knew what it was like. He said, I must decrease that he may increase. He knew about the measure, the fuller. He talked about me decreasing, him increasing, being full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. So the only way for God to increase is for you to decrease. If you're not interested, all I can say is I'm going to pray for you. Because the scriptures describe what you are. A wicked man. Through the pride of his countenance, will not seek for God. The Lord calls, the Lord calls such people wicked. That bothers me. I hate to even think about it. But let me tell you a little more about pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. For all the wicked who refuse to seek God, their destruction and their fall is on its way. God gives grace to the humble, but to the proud he opposes. I wouldn't want to be in opposition to God. I wouldn't want to be one who's opposing God. But every proud man or woman opposes God. And it says God will confuse them. He will confound them because they oppose him. No, no man's going to win by opposing God. It's that pride, the pride of man was the very reason that Lucifer was cast out of heaven. He was brought down. He was kicked out because of pride. One thing, pride. 
I don't want pride. I don't want pride in me. I don't want to be proud. I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to be rebellious. I want to know what God wants me to do and I want to do it. But the only way I can do that is humble myself. His word says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And then what God will do, you say, well, I'm not humbling myself to God. But what he'll do, he says, if you'll humble yourself under my mighty hand, then I will lift you up. So God's not trying to bring you down so you can just be under his hand. He's trying to get his hand under you so he can lift you up. But until you bring yourself under his hand, he can't lift you up. His whole purpose is to lift us up. He loves us. But may we not have this one thing that's going to hinder us, and it's called pride. Pray that we have not that pride. We need to pray we have not pride. We hope you were blessed by today's message. For more messages, to contact us, send your prayer request, or to make donations to support this outreach ministry, go to lighthouseoutreach.org or download our app on iTunes, Google, or any Android device. If you're ever in our area, we invite you to visit us at 9437 West U.S. Highway 84, about seven miles west of Ross Clark Circle in Dothan, Alabama.